Hey folks, Triple Crown here coming to you from Vancouver, British Columbia. This is a round nine summary of the Global War 1939 playtest. Um, this is the resurgence of the KMT and you can see they have pushed the uh, Japanese forces back, you know, one or two spaces and well, the Japanese are in a little bit of trouble um, they did build a minor, a, a fourth minor industrial complex up here in Korea, and they dropped off six units up here in Amur. Um, but the Russians are coming now, and so there's going to be a, I would imagine, a standoff. And the Japanese now um, do have a couple more naval transports up here, um, six of them, so they could drop off you know, 18 units along the east coast of China, which might be advisable to do. Um, China was in a little bit of trouble here in Burma. Um, so they actually used the naval transports from here to bring an extra three units and drop them off to make sure that they took Burma away from the FEC because they had at that time, I think about eight tanks here or six, or maybe, maybe it wasn't eight, maybe it was about six tanks here and a mech, which could have blitzed through and had a poke at this factory here. So the Japanese did not want that to happen. So they brought a couple extra guys to make sure they took it. However, the FEC did take it back last turn. The Japanese brought down a couple more destroyers and a submarine to reinforce this Navy here to ensure they have naval superiority over the hopeful Anzac and Dutch, Canadian and British fleet here. Um, so they are currently <laughs> outnumbered by about one or two ships now. So um, <laughs> they tried, they're trying. Uh, however, the British down here were able to clear this uh, convoy zone and their other, naval, their other Navy now is at a naval base. So this Japanese destroyer here, which is actually a Siamese destroyer, is probably going to get out of the way. Siam uh, did build um, a few. They're down to building infantry now, so they have to protect their tanks. They're only making... Um, 19 IPP on the tracker so just to build six infantry is going to be tough for them. The Japanese continue to build their massive armada of fleet. They did build another naval transport here. Um, start threatening the west coast of the United States and Canada and the US did not spend any money over here again. They were successful in lend leasing the Russians um, 20 IPP and that 10 IPP went about right here most of it uh, purchased a you know a couple infantry and an armor so um, and actually that's a heavy armor and a regular armor so Russia is still spending a little bit more over here Russia was successful in pushing into Valpuri now that the air the Luftwaffe has backed away however there is still about six units there in, in Helsinki and a veteran fighter so they could uh, bring those guys back. Still a standoff here happening on the Eastern Front. The Germans are having a slight, maybe advantage in units. However, they're mostly infantry, so they do not have the punch to go in and take Ole Kursk. But they do have the numerical advantage down here still. The Italians now um, are pretty strongly into Greece. They've got about five units there. And the Germans have about four in Bulgaria. You can bring down some more fast movers and, and bombers behind it. So actually these are, these are the Italian bombers, a tactical and a bomber that came down. And it was mutual destruction here in Istanbul. So, but currently the, the British have been walking these infantry across from Iraq. They're almost there. So they're just, this is really what has saved Moscow is this Turkey thing. Just just forcing the Italians and the Germans to come down south. Um, even if they're trading, losing two units to every one of the German and Italians, um, it's, it is saving Russia. So that has been helpful. The Russians uh, drove a heavy tank and an infantry into Baltic states. They lost the infantry, but survived with a heavy tank. The Germans built about six more submarines the Allies were freaking out. What are we going to do? 
Well, they remembered that if they moved here off of London, they have the advantage of a naval base, which has three, we can't barely see them, um, Supermarine Zero. <laughs> Sorry, not Supermarine Zero. I'm, I'm tired, folks. I don't know if you can tell. Um, Spitfires, they have three Spitfires there that can scramble. And they also built a their own battleship now. So they currently have um, the, the the count by about um, six. What is it, about seven or eight units? Um, so they probably could do a landing here in Western Europe. However, the Germans are in a little bit of trouble here because they've been building navy, and their factory in Berlin is bombed. Uh, sorry, Western Germany and, and France's bomb. They decided not to build there this turn, so they built some fast movers and some more guys back here in Berlin. Actually, there's... I think, yeah, these armored trains are actually there. So the armored trains are going to have to make their way back. I forgot they, they had moved some stuff, so they are stuck now in, in France, so they're going to have to go back and grab those infantry and bring them back. Um, over here on the eastern seaboard, the Americans built a carrier, or two carriers, a destroyer and four naval transports that can bring fully loaded Canada, built a Lancaster bomber and a destroyer to make sure they have naval superiority going forward. And the continue of shuck, shuck, shuck up here from... Um, Southern Africa and a shuck, shuck, shuck here from this military base. Um, they're starting to make their way up to um, this uh, defensive wall here in Orle Kursk. So that's all I got for round nine, folks. Kind of a more of a repositioning turn other than the, uh, the KMT here who are um, punching um, quite well now that they've got uh, forces, uh, forces all over the place in China. So... Thanks for watching, folks. Stay tuned for round 10.